For more on Gap, let's bring in retail analyst Richard Jaffe of Stiefel Nicholas. He has a buy recommendation, and he's joining us now on the phone. Uh, Richard, I'm looking back here. You actually have had a buy since about, it uh, looks like May of 2009. The stock's actually risen in that period of time. But, you know, with this latest raft of issues for Gap, why are you still sticking with that buy recommendation? What's sort of the, the bull case here? Well, I, I think the bull case is the one that I've had for the last three years, that you've got a senior management team that is very smart, very capable, and has demonstrated their ability to be very, very effective in fixing gaps, first operationally, balance sheet, to run a better business, to speed inventory turns, and to incrementally change the people, improve the leadership and the fashion in each business. We've seen the success at Old Navy, and we've seen the beginnings at Gap, an, an initiative to bring in new designers, new leadership. Um, but this obviously is a setback, and a setback I see as a buying opportunity. You know, uh, you talked about the new designers, and certainly there's been a lot of, of turnover on that front. And I hear from retail industry veterans over and over again, Glenn Murphy, the CEO, is not a merchandise guy. His background is in drugstores in Canada. He's good at profitability in the bottom line, but it comes back to not being able to get that fashion mix quite right. Now, with this turnover that we've seen on the design team, are they any close? to getting there. Well, they've made the right move. Glenn has been very clear to all of us and to himself that he's not a merchant, but he was able to recognize the weakness in the leadership team at Old Navy, to replace them with the right people, and to get Old Navy back on track. He made a similar move at the Gap Division. He gave them three years, a year to learn the job, a year to implement the changes, and a year to judge the results. And in three years, the team didn't get it done, and they were gone. And there's a new team in place. Uh, a new structure in place as well, and one that I think warrants some consideration. He knows it's about product, and he knows he has to find the people to provide the product, to provide the inspiration to consumers to get them to shop again. So, Richard, that's obviously the sales side of the equation. As to the cost side of the equation, I mean, all of retailers obviously are being hit by rising cotton costs and other input mm -hmm. costs like energy. Is there anything Gap can be doing to, ma to manage that whole process better, manage costs better, given the, the rising nature of the costs? Well, I think they've done a great job managing their expenses, excluding the cost of goods. Uh, I think their challenge now is to continue to keep the pressure on their suppliers as cotton prices fall and they begin they've begun falling and will continue we believe for the next 12 months we think they'll retrace that cotton inflation and next year we'll be looking back on this and saying boy that was a wild time uh, in the meantime they've got to work their way through this the high cotton prices to work with low margin to maintain market share to maintain the value formula that's been so successful at Old Navy and a Gap Outlet. I think they will do that. It's the right decision. It's going to impact earnings by, call it, 50 cents mm -hmm. for the balance of this year. But I think as we get through this, and Cotton will retrace, uh, we'll see Gap regain its earnings power mm -hmm. and be able to fuel its growth internationally on the and on the Internet. Oh, Richard, before I let you go, i got to ask you about the takeover talk that's been out there. H&M mentioned as a possible uh, company that could take over the Gap. With Gap's troubles, does that increase any pressure on the company to do a breakup or takeover? Well, a breakup doesn't make sense. Uh, a takeover has to make sense to the Fisher family, which still controls the company. Donald Fisher founded it. Doris Fisher, his wife, uh, uh, is, is the single largest shareholder with her three sons, all also significant shareholders, um, they have to want to have something like that happen. Uh, I'm not convinced they are motivated to do that, and particularly not at this valuation. Um, is this the right business for H&M to buy? I, I don't think so. Is this a, a Warren Buffett kind of investment? Perhaps a, a benevolent owner like that would be the right thing for the Fishers to do, but it's strictly speculation on my part. And again, the Fishers call the shots here. Interesting speculation, though. Richard Jaffe, who's been covering the gap. Thank you so much, Richard, from Stiefel Nicholas. Appreciate it.